if you've never played the original Rome Total War, or if you're looking for a more easygoing campaign to ease yourself back into it, I'm going to recommend five factions that would be a good place to start and give you an overview of what to expect. The number one obvious beginner faction is of course the Romans, but I want this list to have some variety on it, so I'm going to give them just this one spot and focus specifically on the House of Julii. The Julii begin the game in northern Italy and your only nearby rival is going to be Gaul, who are pretty much just there to be an easy target. Gaul's most common unit is the Warband, which is a weak form of spear infantry, and spear infantry in this game has a penalty against sword infantry like Hastati, so the game is really just handing you a massive advantage against your early opponents. Unlike the Brutii and the Scipii, you're not really incentivized to build up a strong navy at first, so you can easily focus the early campaign specifically on wiping out the Gauls. Also, unlike the other Romans, your early opponents won't have phalanx units. Fighting a phalanx head-on is usually a bad idea, so you're going to have a much easier time dealing with them once you have a bit more experience of outmaneuvering and flanking your opponents. As the Julii fighting against Gaul, you're usually safe just to send your units directly in for a straight fight. The first phalanx unit you're likely to come up against is the Spear Warband of Germania, which is one of the least threatening phalanx units in the game, so the game really eases you into that type of combat. The only potential downside of playing as the Julii is that Gaul's starting lands are very basic, usually very small settlements, with no significant infrastructure. So they don't provide a huge amount of income, and they don't provide any significant access to sea trade. That means the other Roman families will often inherit much richer settlements than you do, which might be a problem if you all have a similar number of settlements when you kick off the Civil War. However, it is completely up to you when you kick off the Civil War, and often you can get away with essentially skipping it altogether by taking Rome as your 50th and final settlement before the other Romans can respond. And the fact that Gaul is such an easy opponent means you should be able to take settlements more quickly at the start of the campaign than the other Romans can regardless. If you are worried about managing your economy without access to the richer provinces in Greece, your next best choice is probably the House of Brutii because the Senate usually pays them to push into Greece at the start of the campaign. Just be aware that you'll quickly find yourself facing enemy phalanx units and you will need to learn to outflank them. The omens are so numerous and so in our favor that I cannot describe them all and still have time for a battle today. Next up, maybe the best candidate for a beginner friendly faction outside of the Romans. Egypt is one of those factions with no real downsides. You've got a strong starting position with large and rich cities like Alexandria and immediate ownership of two of the game's world wonders in the Lighthouse of Alexandria and the Great Pyramid of Giza. You've got a really strong economy from the start with a starting treasury of 5,000 gold and you can easily get another 5,000 gold per turn just by adjusting your tax rates. Your town of Salamis in Cyprus is rarely targeted by the AI players and your other settlements are squeezed between the Mediterranean coast and the edge of the map so it's really easy to push out the frontiers of your empire without leaving your original settlements exposed. Your starting position puts you up against Numidia on one side who have one of the game's weakest unit rosters and on the other side, your nearest neighbour is the Seleucid Empire, who begin the campaign surrounded on all sides and unable to really prioritise defending against you. Outside of that, you have an extremely diverse, if somewhat historically inaccurate unit roster, with no real weaknesses. Your elite phalanx infantry unit, the Pharaoh's Guards, and your elite archers, the Pharaoh's Bowmen, are both among the best in their respective classes. The downside is they are very expensive, but as Egypt, you have such a strong economy that it doesn't really matter. But if you do find yourself struggling for gold, you also have access to one of the best value units in the game in the form of Desert Cavalry. They're priced similar to Greek Cavalry, but they're so much better due to their armor-piercing weapons, which also makes them incredibly cost-efficient against the Romans. In fact, Desert Cavalry will often outperform both tiers of Egyptian Cavalry above them, so a basic stable is always sufficient unless you're desperate to get to the fourth tier of stable, which will give you access to Camel Archers, but those are only available in specific locations anyway. The closest thing you have to a weakness as Egypt is you don't really start near the Romans, so you won't usually get the chance to take them out before they grow strong, but Egypt has so much potential in the late campaign that it's not really a big problem. Also, a point I could make for most of the factions on this list is that while phalanx units are amazing at defending choke points in towns, they can be annoying to assault enemy towns with due to the game's sometimes unreliable pathfinding in narrow streets. You can still use them to starve out opponent's cities though, so the positives definitely outweigh the negatives. Another beginner friendly faction is the Greek cities. They have one of the most unique starting positions in the game and you might feel a bit stretched because you have towns all across the Mediterranean from Sicily to Asia Minor, but in reality the game hands you all the tools you need to make it work. 
Syracuse is maybe your most precarious starting position, but if you focus on building it up, you can usually make it very difficult for Carthage and the Scipii to conquer, and you've easily got enough potential strength to strike out against them first, and take control of Sicily. In mainland Greece, your capital starts with a free unit of Spartan Hoplites, which is easily one of the best units in the game, and possibly the best individual unit on the map at the start of the campaign. It's pretty much a case of the game inviting you to make a strong push in any direction you choose. A safe early move is to immediately attack Athens and use it to help overwhelm Macedon, but in theory you could turn your focus to crushing the Romans as early as possible while they're still stuck with weak and unreformed units. In the east you have the Seleucids on your doorstep who are usually too distracted to pay you any attention, and you can usually capture the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus Wonder before its effect on late game buildings becomes relevant. That's in addition to the Colossus of Rhodes wonder you get at the very start of the campaign, which boosts your trade income, especially in the late game, and you can easily capture the Statue of Zeus in an early war with Macedon, which will increase public order in all your towns. The Greek unit roster is a little bit lopsided in that it lacks strong archers and cavalry, but it's almost like the campaign conspires to help you overcome that. You can use your general's bodyguards as powerful cavalry, and you have immediate access to mercenary Cretan archers, which are one of the best archer units in the game. In Rome Remastered, you also now have the ability to retrain Cretan archers in their native lands as well, which if anything makes the Greek campaign even more beginner friendly than it was in the original. Also, while Spartan hoplites are amazing units, the real stars of the Greek campaign are probably the armoured hoplites. You can start training these from very early on from a mid-tier barracks, and even though they are similarly reliable to Spartans, they're extremely cheap in comparison. If you'd like to see the Greek Cities campaign in action, I've just kicked off a new campaign playthrough on the channel, so do check the playlist link in the description after the video to check that out. The Macedon campaign is fairly similar to the Greek campaign, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it might be the right campaign for you if you like the idea of having all your starting settlements in the same place. Similarly to the Greek campaign, it's probably a good idea to grab Athens before your neighbours get to it, and it is something you're easily able to do before anyone else. Going to war with Greece and Thrace might distract you from attacking the Romans, but you're still close enough to them that you can easily invade Italy and wipe them out before they pick up the Marian reforms and start steamrolling the map. It's also fairly easy at the start of the campaign to capture Sparta from the Greeks because it starts with no walls, meaning you can attack it immediately and sometimes it's left almost completely undefended. In the late game as Macedon, you get access to companion cavalry, which makes your unit roster feel a lot more balanced than the Greeks. And like the Greeks, you also have good access to Cretan archers in some areas along the Mediterranean coast. If you can successfully grab some of the strong cities you start off next to, you'll have the combination of a strong economy and access to good units that you need to carry you through the rest of the campaign. Next up, barbarian factions are a huge part of this game, so I thought I should include at least one in this list, even though they can be slightly more challenging to pull off for a new player. Britannia finds itself facing a bit of a mixed bag in terms of the remaster because on the one hand, your chariots aren't as overpowered in auto-resolve as they were in the original, but on the other hand, Squalor has been capped to be far less problematic in the late campaign. In the original version of Rome, being limited to only the third tier of city meant that you were often faced with growing populations and serious Squalor issues without any access to some of the late game buildings other factions get to help deal with it. In any case, Britannia still has its main selling point going for it, which is that the British Isles aren't usually attacked very often, and you can usually keep them safe using any decently sized navy. What beginners might struggle to adapt to at first is that Britannia's roster is one of the more unconventional. For example, they can't recruit archers or cavalry except as mercenaries, relying instead on a combination of chariots and various types of skirmishes. However, you do have fairly straightforward access to good temples. You have the Shrine of Britannia line which improves your trade and gives you more money to play with than the other barbarians, and you also have the war-based Shrine of Andrasta line, which is really good in those frontline towns. The Sacred Grove of Andrasta, which is your second tier shrine, gives you access to Head Hurlers, which are a really cheap skirmish unit that can easily destroy Roman legions, thanks to its ability to ignore half their armour. Then you also have Chariots and Chariot Generals, which do bonus damage against cavalry units like Generals Bodyguards. Enemy archers could give you more problems, but there's a good availability of mercenary barbarian cavalry on the European mainland, which you can use as specialised anti-archer units, and you can also recruit units like Chosen Swordsmen, which are good all-rounders. I would say this faction is slightly more challenging than the others on this list, and in particular, 
you need to be ready to push towards the Romans fairly quickly before they can build up too much. However, most other barbarian factions don't have the luxury of easily defensible home provinces, which means they're not as comfortable throwing everything into early aggression as Britannia is. The enemy king runs! Truly, all his people are cowards, and he is just the greatest of them all! Ultimately, this game is quite beginner-friendly, so you should be okay on medium difficulty, regardless of which of these factions you choose. Key things to remember are don't let the Romans build up too much before you do, and when you do push out, make sure you're ready for the AI players to start targeting your weekly garrison border towns. If you'd like to see more content, do subscribe to the channel, and if you're somebody who enjoys watching a relaxed playthrough from time to time, do have a look at the playlist link for my Greek Cities campaign in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. The enemy king now drinks with his glorious ancestors. His men now rightly fear us. This is a great victory! The cries of dying enemies are sweet music to our warriors!